Kicking off the summer season at Jersey Lakes, advocates and officials this week took a boat ride aboard the floating classroom on Lake Apatcong, the finale of a day-long multi-lake tour highlighting efforts to control harmful algal blooms or HABs. Lake communities fear a repeat of the disastrous 2019 season when HABs prompted the DEP to close beaches. Since uh, 2019, when we all woke up to a, a very green lake, and a real slap in our face as to what we thought we had been doing. Uh, just a lot of wonderful work has gone on since then. We can't keep doing the same thing and expect different results doesn't work. Mayor Mike Francis is a Patcong borough occupies the lake's entire west shore. It's installed 36 DEP financed aerators to oxygenate the water. Because algae feeds on nutrients and sewage and stormwater runoff, the town also asked the DEP for funding to convert old septic tanks to modern sewer lines. I borrowed actually a nano grant from the DEP and it, we did uh, about 3,000 feet of a sewer line down the road, it cost about $400,000, and we took 40 lakefront septics offline. And so that's significant. Now next year, uh, once we see how this resulted, how this worked, uh, we'll probably do another 3,000 feet and take another 20 or 30 lakefront septics. There's a lot of low-hanging fruit out there, rain gardens, carp, biochar, which we're doing all over the lake. It's working really well, so there's some really cool ideas. Biochar filters nutrients from runoff. The DEP financed several pilot projects in 2020 to examine its effectiveness. The agency's also anchored several buoys on Lake Apatcong to monitor cyanobacteria counts and deployed regular aerial surveillance at several lakes to electronically detect algal blooms. This month, the DEP's HAB map shows only Mountain Lake with orange advisory HAB levels. Lake Apatcong's logged two lower blue watch level HABs. The floating classroom's first mate's been keeping watch. In certain cases, uh, when we do the scientific tests here on this boat with the children, some of the readings we're getting are indicators that it, it might be going up already. So this is, I believe, a concern. And if you see it actually on the water, then we know for sure what's happening. Controlling this problem costs money. The DEP had announced $10 million in grants. The application deadline's Friday, but another $10 million is in the pipeline. A specific stormwater management uh, grant program where the DEP will fund the creation of the feasibility studies to do a stormwater utility. Uh, we believe it's imperative for local governments counties or uh, a combination of localities to consider establishing stormwater utilities because they promote these management ends. And to get you started, we'll pay for it. It's the way to go. Uh, unfortunately, it's not going to be enough. And that's why we think, you know, folks should chip in locally. The League of Conservation Voters, Ed Potasnik's fine with aerators, rain gardens, and floating islands, another way to bind up nutrients and clean up lake water, but says that just addresses the symptoms. He's promoting stormwater utilities. Which would create a regional approach that would equitably fund investments in the lake to reduce the amount of pollution going in there in the first place. But creating a regional agency raises objections, fears of more government and costly red tape. I believe in regional planning, but I don't believe in creating more bureaucracy. Senator Anthony Bucco supports establishing a permanent funding source to address lake health, especially now, while Jersey's flush with tax revenues. It's critically important not only for recreation, but for the economic engine that is created uh, by these by these large water bodies, Greenwood Lake, Lake Apakon, Lake Muskinekong. And if we don't take care of them, we will for sure lose them. At Apakon State Park, I'm Brenda Flanagan, NJ Spotlight News.